in this video, we will be going over how to change the bearing assembly on the Wave Vortex Rotator. When changing the bearing assembly, you'll want to work on a clean, flat surface. Additionally, you will need a small Phillips head screwdriver, a large Phillips head screwdriver, a 1 16th of an inch hex driver, and a 3 32nd of an inch hex driver. To skip ahead, click on the description below for timestamps. First, make sure the wave vortex is turned off. It's easier to work with the enclosure window lifted and the motor unit positioned at the top of the support rod. Next, unplug the motor cable by loosening the two thumb screws and pull the cable out of the motor unit. On the motor bracket, remove the two screws with the large Phillips head screwdriver. Once the two screws are removed, lift the motor unit off the support rod. Turn the motor unit upside down where it can sit on a flat surface. Next, remove the screws that connect the wires to the ring and disc brushes. Before removing them, take note of the crimp orientation. Both crimps should be in the same orientation when reassembling the wave vortex. Once the screws are removed, unscrew the two brushes with your fingers. Next, remove the two set screws on the motor housing. Once the screw is removed, gently lift the motor housing off the motor unit, exposing the motor head and the motor wire assembly. Unclip the motor wire assembly by pressing this lever and pull the motor housing from the motor head. Place the motor housing off to the side. Okay, now we have the motor head. If you look here, there is a gap in the motor head where you will see the motor head coupling. The motor head coupling has two hex screws. Loosen the hex screw that is closer to the shaft using the 1 16th of an inch hex driver. Do not touch the hex screw that is closer to the motor wire assembly. You do not need to remove the screw completely. Once the screw is loosened, pull the shaft out of the motor head. The shaft should slide out with little to no resistance. Place the shaft where it won't fall or get damaged. On the bearing assembly, remove the three inner screws using your small Phillips head screwdriver. Once removed, you can pull the bearing assembly out. Now replace the bearing assembly or clean out any silver graphite dust that might have accumulated in the bearing assembly. There are two holes on the bearing assembly where you mount the brushes. Make sure the holes are facing the disc and ring wires on the motor head bracket. When placing the bearing assembly back into the wave vortex, it's easiest if you place the screws in the bearing assembly first and use both hands to gently settle the screws into the motor unit. Once the screws catch, tighten the screws about halfway using the Phillips head screwdriver. The bearing assembly should be a little loose. Before we completely tighten the bearing assembly, we need to install the shaft. Place the shaft into the bearing assembly. It should easily slide in all the way. On the motor head coupling, tighten the hex screw with your 1 16th of an inch hex driver. This should be the hex screw closest to the shaft. Do not touch the other hex screw. The shaft should also spin freely. Back on the bearing assembly, we'll finish tightening the three screws. Reconnect the motor wire assembly from the motor housing to the motor head. 
There should only be one configuration for clipping the motor wire assembly together. Place the motor unit back on the table with the shaft pointed up, and using your 3 32 of an inch hex driver, thread the set screw into the motor housing. Next, install the brushes using your fingers. Note that the brush that is closest to the shaft connects to the blue contact wire, the ring electrode, and the brush closest to the motor housing connects to the red contact wire, the disc electrode. Wire the disc and ring contact wires to the brushes. Make sure the crimp is in the same orientation as it was at the beginning of this video, where the long side of the ring electrode crimp is perpendicular to the length of the shaft, otherwise it won't fit into the lift bracket. Turn the motor unit right side up and place the motor unit back on the lift bracket. Install the motor unit by threading the motor bracket onto the lift bracket. Reconnect the motor cable and tighten the two thumb screws with your fingers. Plug the wave vortex back in and turn it on. Awesome! At this point you have successfully replaced the bearing assembly on the wave vortex rotator. If you have any questions, please contact Pine Research. I'll see you soon.